Hey, what is up everyone? My name is Kyle, and uh, this is just a little random video of like the top 10 zombie games. I say top 10, it's not necessarily top 10, it's not like rated for what one's the best and what one's the worst or whatever. Basically, it's kind of an order that I would see it as being... Put it this way, man this is hard to explain. I would say the first one on the list, you have like the most zombie experience, like the most interactability with the zombies. Interactability? That's a word, sure, why not? Uh, <laughs> And the game lowest down on the list is kind of like the last, it's like I wouldn't choose it over the other games to play. I like them all, but again, it's not necessarily a top 10 zombie game. Because, I mean, to be honest, I like Dead Island almost more than Dead Rising. Because it's, I don't know, something about it I like. Anyway, uh, thanks for clicking the video, thanks for watching if you eventually watch it, and enjoy! Up at number one here, we've got Dead Rising. In general, not any specific one. Because I couldn't choose any specific one. So, anyway, here we go. Dead Rising franchise has been around in the gaming world since September 2006. Since then, it has evolved from a stressful time management and rescue experience to just another zombie slasher paired with some old Dead Rising charm. Uh, the original games have been the first, second, and off the record were great fun and enjoyable, even though they could be really quite frustrating. Especially, uh, while trying to escort survivors back and dealing with AI in the first game. Saint achievement was not easy. Uh, they followed the storyline well, and they didn't stray too far from it, keeping the certain locations and characters generally the same uh, from game to game. Uh, as a story, uh, however, I do know that off the record is non-canon, but at least we can still enjoy the original Frank West voice with those witty-ass one-liners. The combat was simple, combo weapons are plenty from the second one onwards, and psychopath bosses uh, all together came to make a really excellent series of games. The third game, uh, in title order that is, not off the record. Uh, was a step in a slightly different direction. With on the move combos, which was great, uh, weapons were more interesting, and uh, not having to go to a workbench or a maintenance tunnel was excellent. Uh, the psychobats were still there, which was good, uh, and the story did carry on from the other games, but very long time after them. Great English, me, good one. <laughs> uh, the map was a decent size, the combo vehicles made an appearance, uh, so that was fun. The inventory system uh, was changed from there on out, uh, and the combat felt different. Not necessarily in a bad way, but it did feel more fluid and open. The timescales were more generous in the third game, uh, and it did also have a mode called Nightmare Mode, where uh, it was a lot less lenient, so that was fun. <laughs> I remember having some quite bad times on that, because I kept forgetting. Also in that mode, uh, you had to go to a restroom to save the game like no Red Dead Risings, uh, and there were no checkpoints, so that was fun. Uh, and then we get to the fourth one, where it had no cycles, per se, it just had some hostile enemies, uh, humans, what were they called, like survivors or something like that, I don't know. Uh, they would be there and then every now and again you get a tougher enemy uh, to deal with but the weapons in the game kind of combated that and it wasn't too bad to be honest. <clears throat> uh, main details that were removed from that one, like the in inability to throw random stuff which sucked because uh, who doesn't like picking up a big stuffed bear and throwing it at a bunch of zombies? That's always fun. Uh, the change in the voice actor um, was meant to show that Frank was older, but the character model didn't really suggest that, because he was kind of ripped in the fourth game as well. Uh, the humour was still there, it was actually really quite a funny game. I liked the fourth one, it just wasn't as good as the other ones. Uh, and it also was still set in the rebuilt Willamette Mall uh, from the first game, uh, and the like towns around it, which was it was a gigantic map to be honest, it was a pretty good map and whatnot. Uh, and also, as with other Dead Rising games, there were the goofy con costumes, so that was fun. Uh, and since it was set around Christmas time, there were quite a few enemies of the elf variety, so that was fun. Personally, I can't choose a favourite between the first or off the record. I do like two, but it's not as good as the first or off the record. Uh, but I do like the others, so yeah. And the second one we have the Dead Island games, which don't include Escape from Dead Island, obviously, because it's not on Xbox. Well, I mean, it is, but it's back in the Anyway. Uh, these games have gone through some hardships in the past, uh, like with the odd glitch here and there and the graphical rendering feeling at times, but I do enjoy the absolute hell out of them. Uh, I've spent many hours slashing my way through uh, Benoit in the first game and Palanoi in the second. Uh, overall, however, the story is kind of just mediocre. Basically, an experiment gone wrong, a handful of people being immune to the disease, which is actually a mutation of the cure virus uh, derived from the indigenous people of the islands. Uh, so that's fun. Um, you basically just need to get off the island and find a cure and all that fun stuff. Uh, both the games are complete for all, and have a ton of weapons to obtain, uh, along with the mods with them, like the simple nail mod where you can add, you guessed it, nails uh, to the weapons, and then the more advanced shock mod applicable to the firearms found and bought throughout the games. Uh, slaying zombies and whatnot could not be more enjoyable. 
These games uh, are among my fav favourite zombie slash infected games uh, for the reason that they're simple, fun, easy to master and have a lot of detail and offer a lot of replayability. I think I've beaten the first one, I don't know, eight times, something like that, uh, between the 360 and the Xbox One. It's pretty fun, I like them all. Uh, also, Dead Island 2 has been in the works for a couple of years, it was meant to come out April 2015, which actually was three years ago at this point, almost, which is fantastic. Uh, however, it has been passed uh, to a different development company uh, than the other two games, which was developed by Techland, uh, and now it's getting developed by Sumo Digital, which, unfortunately, from the people that want Dead Island 2, won't be coming out for a while because they're working on goddamn Crackdown 3, so that's fan dabby uh, I want Dead Island 2. Crackdown 3, goddammit. And the third one on the list now is State of Decay, another Free Room Zombie game on the list for a reason. Free Room Zombie games are awesome, they're the way it should be, other than some games like Resident Evil and whatnot, Free Room Zombie games are just amazing. State of Decay does not break this rule. The main story of the game uh, is about you and some other survivors trying to escape Trumbull County, I think it is, could be Valley, Trumbull County, Trumbull Valley, maybe Trumbull Valley actually. Uh, basically a little town in a valley, uh, which has been ravaged by a viral infection originating from the town's water supply, supposedly. I think that's what happens, which in turn causes the zombification process. Your main character, Marcus Campbell, uh, was on a fishing trip with his friend Ed. Speaking of Ed, this game is full of references to movies and other games, so that's fun. Uh, when they get back, they notice something's not right, uh, enter the zombie carnage. The map is reasonably big, uh, many uses for the vehicles lying around, and you can explore each house uh, and building up. I've actually had a lot of experience with Dead Resident Evil Rage Quits recently. Not recently, but... And you can explore each house and building to recover any helpful supplies. You can upgrade your base, choose various locations for your base if you have accumulated enough survivors that is. Build the garden area, lookouts, a mechanical workshop, it's all good. There are a few pieces of DLC for this game, one called Breakdown, which is just another mini campaign sort of thing filled with unlockable characters. Uh, to be honest, most of which are unlocked by killing a certain number of zombies with specific weapons and whatnot. So that's fun. The main point of this DLC is to gear up and survive in an RV. The main point of this DLC is to gear up and uh, escape in an RV, uh, but the character unlocks a major part in it as well, because that's awesome. You get a ton of characters and achievements, I like achievements. Speaking of the characters, this game does have a permadeath feature both in the main game and all the DLCs, so if your character dies there's no getting them back, unless you do what I do and you just turn your Xbox off as soon as you die, because, you know, ha. <laughs> uh, the other DLC is called Lifeline, which is about a military group doing some stuff in uh, a city near the valley and from the main game. Uh, to be honest, I've not played much of it. It is good though, I've played some of it, not much. Uh, I, would, I would recommend it, to be honest. Um, so yeah, overall, State of Key is an enjoyable, free roam, zombie survival-ish game with a sort of base work thrown into it. Uh, it's definitely worth it. So, I would recommend that. And at number 4 we've got Dying Light, which is another free roam zombie game, also developed by the same developers that developed Dead Island and Riptide. So it does have a little bit of the feel for Dead Island uh, and the combat mainly because the movement relies heavily on free running, uh, which is awesome, especially when you're not to grab on hook. But the game is set in Haran, a fictional city supposedly in Turkey, where you play as Kyle Crane, a GRE operative sent in to retrieve some stolen files. The city in the second part of the game, a location from which, when unlocked, can be explored at will, is also as big as the main section. There are a lot of weapons to choose from, and there are blueprints, which can be added to the weapons to improve certain aspects of them. You can level up in three different trees, uh, which being agility, strength, and survival. And then there's also a legendary one, which is like, it unlocks when you max out one of the other ones, I think, I'm pretty sure. Uh, at the end of the agility and strength tree, you'll be able to run and fight tirelessly, never needing to fight, never needing to take a break. So hack and slash all you want, the only thing that will stop your is your weapon breaking. And if you get grabbed from behind, so just don't get grabbed, right? At night, enemies are tougher and stronger, with volatiles coming out of hiding, which are big, gigantic, infected creatures capable of annihilating you in seconds, and the regular walkers scattered around uh, will also mutate into the virals, which are basically infected from Dead Island. Uh, and also, they can all free run to an extent. Uh, oh yeah, the dropkick also. Uh, basically, the only reason to get the game. Well, not the only reason, one of the best reasons. So you're walking on the roof of the building, dropkick. Walk in front of an electrified fence, dropkick. Feel on board, dropkick. Simple. And in at number 5 we've got Resident Evil, as many know, which was the beginning of the zombie survival horror genre sort of thing with games. Uh, this is the first game, sort of, it's the third, or some, something somewhere around there, 
remaster for it is the original being released in 1996 for the PlayStation, then again for the GameCube, then the Wii, and now the Xbox One. And the 360 also. The areas vary throughout the versions, but the story does say the same. You're playing as either Jill Valentine or Chris Redfield, you can choose whatever one you want to play as, uh, who are members of the Special Tactics and Rescue Service, otherwise known as STARS, uh, which is a fancy branch of the Raccoon Police Department. Bravo Team's chopper goes out in the Arkley Mountains, uh, on the outskirts of Raccoon City, uh, and you're sent with the uh, Alpha Team to rescue them, even though the reports state that Chris is actually head of Bravo Team, so I don't know what's going on there. Uh, commenters, give me help. <laughs> Uh, but when you get there, you're attacked by the Cerberus, which has basically infected canines, and retreat to the mansion, the Spencer Mansion. There you find a bunch of puzzles, zombies, weapons, and good times. Sort of. Ammo can be s scarce, so it's still advised to go in all guns blazing, like the Saban song. Also, a Mono Mars song. Uh, <laughs> uh, but if you play the, through the game enough, that'll be no problem, because uh, there are uh, unlocks you can get for completing the game in under 3 hours or less. Um, and 5 hours. 5 hours gets you the, the Samurai Edge, which is a fancy, fancy version of the Beretta 92F, which is a stars issued weapon. And 3 hours or less unlocks the Infinite Launcher. Both have unlimited ammo, actually. So it's goddamn good. Uh, also, it's Resident Evil. What's not to like? And now we've got Resident Evil Zero. Uh, although it was released 6 years after Resident Evil 1, it's actually a prequel to it. So that's interesting. Uh, it does take place in three different locations. Uh, first, a train called the Ecliptic Express, owned by Umbrella. It was a passenger train that just got overrun by zombies and other BOWs, like a big ass scorpion, which was fun to fight. Uh, the second sort of main location is the Umbrella Training Facility, which is as it sounds, it's just a building somewhere to the mansion. It's got dorms and chemical sections for Umbrella employees and whatnot, stuff like that. Thirdly, the last main ish area is a lab, dam, gondola, mechanical area. I don't really know how to. You know, describe it perfectly, but that's basically the gist. <laughs> uh, but really, it's kind of like a cave hideout that's not a hideout, built into a mountain with a bunch of systems and a bunch of rooms, and there's a dam, and it's the whole thing. Uh, also, there's an annoying BOW frog that can kill you with the flick of its tongue. That's uh, done me in quite a few times in my little playthrough I've got on it, so yeah. Fun! Uh, you can play as Rebecca Chambers, a rookie member of Stars. Uh, she was part of Bravo Teams, whose chopper went down. Uh, after engine failure, uh, after this they scatter due to an attack from the Cerberus, similar to the first game, ironically, and Rebecca finds the halted train. From the train you meet Billy Cohen, a former lieutenant turned convict, uh, and you assist each other in escaping the horror while learning of Billy's falsified conviction. Again, it's Resident Evil. Just save ammo, unlock infinity ammo. Zombies, BOWs, no checkpoints, multiple replays will ensue. Also, possible rage. I know I have, trust me. And at number 7, we've got a game called Zombie, which used to be Zombie U when it was exclusive to the Wii U, then it moved on to Xbox, PC, PlayStation. So, that's fun. Basically, you play as some survivors in London, 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 after a virus causes the dead to rise and attack the living. Supposedly this virus is a, a curse or something like that and you need to like find a cure for the curse even though you don't believe in the curse, it's the whole thing. Uh, while at the same time trying to survive, so that's fun. You're playing off a permadeath feature, also like State of Decay. So if your character dies, they're gone for good. Uh, also, if you're playing through the same section to try and retrieve your uh, lost items from dying, uh, your character will actually be there zombified. And the recently reanimated are more formidable than your regular run in the mill zombies. So, uh, watch out when you're dealing with them. That's not always fun. <laughs> it's kind of free roam, but not to a great extent. There are objectives, uh, waypoints and missions sort of things. Uh, basically, like, go there, collect this, put this together and find this, that sort of thing. I like it, it can be quite freaky at times also. Uh, I would definitely recommend it, it's a fun game. And then with number 8, we've got Zombie Army Trilogy. The easiest way to describe this game, think of Left 4 Dead 2, and the first one, uh, but set in World War 2, that's basically it, and Nazi Zombies instead of Infected. Uh, it's pretty fun actually, to be honest, it's a really enjoyable game. You can choose one of four characters to play as along again with Left 4 Dead, shoot your way through a bunch of various campaigns, again with Left 4 Dead, and kill some zombie bosses, you guessed it, again with Left 4 Dead. So yeah, basically World War 2 Left 4 Dead if I haven't en emphasised that enough already. It's quite a fun game and some might say it's even better with friends, not that I would know. There's really not much else uh, I can think to say about it, it's just a good zombie shooter with slow-mo kills added in for fun, because it is a spin-off of Sniper Elite, so you can get that uh, bullet time I think it's called, which is really fun. Uh, there are plenty of hours to be spent in this, and I would not mind making a few videos on it either. Uh, overall, 
that's a pretty short little bit, so I'm just going to blabber on for a bit here. Uh, <laughs> overall, it's a really good game. Like I've said, uh, if you like campaign-based uh, progressive games like that, and if you just like Left 4 Dead, you're probably going to like this. However, it is third person, along with the st Sniper Elite games. So if you don't like third person games, you might not like this. However, if you like shooting zombies in the head in slow motion and seeing their brains just like blow everywhere, get it. It's fun. And the second last game in the list, we have got How to Survive 1 and 2. These games are pretty damn fun to be honest. There's a lot of stuff to do in them. It's got crafting, surviving, killing, running away from hordes so you don't get treated like a human half meal. It's all good. There are some leveling up aspects in the first game also, which make it all the more fun. Uh, and the archipelago of islands that you're on makes for good quests, questing and supply running. Basically, you have to find a way off the island and, uh, that's infested by the zombies by gathering supplies and rebuilding a boat and a plane and etc. On the way, you're assisted by a, a verified survivor called Kovac. He's got a ton of knowledge on what to do and how to do it. So listen to him will get you through the ordeal. Also, there's infected deer, boars and other things like that. So don't eat them, that would not end well. At night there's an enemy, I don't remember the name of it, but it basically doesn't like the light, so uh, when it comes out, just turn your flashlight on, it's all good. If you don't however, uh, you'll get eviscerated, so that's not great to be honest. <laughs> uh, usually what I just do is just chill out in the little base at night and just like sit there and hide and cover away. Uh, <laughs> that's basically it. Also when you're in the base you can just like craft ammo, craft weapons, craft medicinal stuff, it's awesome. As for the second How to Survive game, there's a level up system, the leveling up system at The leveling up system in it is far superior, it's incredible. There's a lot more you can do, like increasing specific attributes of your character and alter the level of the the difficulty of the level so you can earn more XP and whatnot. However, that will increase the difficulty, so have fun. The game is sort of free roam, but not in the way of like Dead Island or something like that. It's um basically if you can accept a mission, you'll be sort of like trans to the mission location, then once it's done you can press a button things like bring the d-pad or something like that, so you can return to the base. Uh, it's, it's pretty much all good, they're really well done games but do have some quirks, but what, what game doesn't. And now, the final game in the list. We finally made it, we're here, I'll probably goof up the grammar in this one but who cares, we're here. Uh, this game uh, is 7 Days to Die, uh, it's also a free roam, survival, crafting zombie game, which can be fun and entertaining, but it does kind of have a long way to go before it can be truly good and like a triple A zombie game. Its concept is great, you just build a base, gather resources and survive the zombie hordes, but it doesn't have great animations in it and the graphics are kind of lacky. Uh, there are a lot of other problems with it too, but uh, if you can get by them it's kind of, it's not too bad, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, it's an enjoyable zombie experience. Uh, there are lots of things to make though, like forges to get iron and workbenches to craft shotguns and whatnot. There's even a way to build a little mini bank, which is awesome. <laughs> it's great for resources and supply runs and stuff like that. Uh, one little minor issue I do have with the crafting is that you actually do need to find recipe book sort of things, uh, which can be quite tedious, especially when you've been playing for three hours and not found any. May or may not be speaking from personal experience, so that's not fun. Other than the many issues that I'm only just realising are taking up quite a bit of this reviewish sort of thingy I'm doing. The game is really quite enjoyable and it's tense as hell at times. There are mass hordes which come every seven days. I <laughs> get it, seven days to die. Ha ha ha, good one. Uh, that will tear down your defences. Alright, if you made it through that, then that's awesome sauce. If you didn't, then I don't know how you'd be listening to this, to be honest, unless you just skipped through it. But either way, thanks for watching, thanks for clicking on the video. If you like this, then check out my channel. I've got a bunch of other fun videos. I've actually done a playthroughs. If I did English. See, this is why I had to cut everything out in the main things because I didn't want to screw them up too much. Anyway, I, I did. Uh, I did have done some playthroughs on some of the games on the list, like Dead Rising. Done all of them actually, apart from the fourth one. Uh, and I haven't done a DLC for the second one. Uh, I've also done playthroughs on Resident Evil One, Resident Evil Zero, Resident Evil Four, which isn't the list, but it's also not a zombie game. So you're a liar if you say it is. You're wrong. Fight me in the comments. Come at me. <laughs> uh, either way, <laughs> if you made it through all this, then thanks again. And if you want, subscribe and uh, like the video. That would be, be fun. Anyway, see you next video. As always, have a good one and goodbye.